Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane, a digital audio school down in Montpellier, France, an Ableton certified training center. Today we're going to learn how to set up the dry wet master looper. This technique will help you add a lot of dynamic to your live set. If you're performing live with external drum machines or even synthesizers or even modular synths, you'll know that programming the synths, programming the patterns, looking for the patches, the presets, takes a little time and this adds a little slowness to the structure of the live set. Well, with this technique, you'll be able to juggle between a recorded live set and the actual live set and you'll also be able to blend both the new clips and the new patterns you programs with the recorded ones, adding a lot of dynamic and punch to your structure. Let's have a look at how it's done. So in order to demonstrate this technique and show you how to set this up in your own live set, I've recreated here a live set, a very simple live set, where we'd be using external instruments. So on the first track here to the left, the drum track, there aren't any clips, because I'll be programming these live here on this virtual sequencer we made for the iPad here, you, go, you see? So I can program live these drums, and I can also choose the type of drums I'm going to be using for each of the sounds. And as I said in the intro here, it takes a lot of time to do this live, you get me? And this is what I'm saying when some live sets that are improvised and programmed live may be a little slow to unfold. The structure might lack of dynamics, you see? It takes time to choose the sounds, to program the sounds. So this is what the Looper Master Dry Wet system will be solving in a minute. So on the next tracks here, the four tracks we are bearing audio clips or backing tracks. So let's play one or two along the drums. There you go. On the final track here, the FX track, I've got a, here on the, the iPad, I also have the possibility to play some one shots and record them. Like so, so this once again reproduces a little bit what happens when we play live, I don't know, with synthesizers or even push. So by default, all the tracks here sending signals, the six tracks, are sending their signals to the master track where all these signals are summed up and sent to the front of the house. So instead of doing this with this system, we're going to be intercepting these signals before they get to the master. And to do that, I'm going to create two new audio tracks. The first one will be called Dry. The second one will be called Looper. There we go. So. I'm going to multi-select all these tracks and send them to the dry channel. So now all the signals are flowing through this channel before being sent to the master. And if I want this channel to send these signals to the master, I need it to be monitored in. So the channel is open and lets the signal it receives over to its fader and in turn to the master. We're going to do the same thing with the looper channel. But instead of sending the signals to it, we're going to ask it to listen to the dry channel. So the signal the dry channel listens and receives will be picked up by this channel. Now, the second option on the NIS pre-FX, post-FX and post-mixer is very important. In order to always get the signal into the looper, I need to select either pre-FX or post-FX. Post-FX seems to be the right choice here if I want the sound I record into the looper to be identical to the one we are hearing through the dry channel. So now we're going to reset the fader of the looper channel, it needs to be the same level of the drive, so there aren't any differences in volume between the two channels. To finish with, I'll open the crossfader in live, which is this little cross here on the right hand side of the master section, here is the crossfader, and I'm going to place the dry channel to the left of that crossfader and the looper channel to the right of that crossfader. Let's now go and set up our looper, go and get it in the audio effects let's load it onto the looper track looper channel here it is yeah go so there are numerous different ways to set up a looper depending on the scenario for this little technique i'm going to set it up to listen and record for four bars and then play the recording automatically i don't want the looper to start and stop live so none on the song control i want the looper to follow the song tempo so i'm going to set up follow song tempo in this option here and finally what happens to the dry signal when it goes through a looper? Do we always hear it? Do we never hear that signal that's being recorded? Do we hear that signal only when the looper records and overdubs? Do we hear that signal when the looper records, overdubs and stops? So that's probably the best option here, record, overdub and stop. 
Finally, I need to control my Looper Live to operate it, so I'm going to map the record button here, the play button, the stop button. I'm going to also map the reverse button. I could also map numerous different uh, controls here that are great to manipulate the signal once it's been recorded. But I'm going to keep it simple for this tutorial. So now over to the crossfader itself. I'm going to map it to the crossfader on my hardware controller. This way, when I go down with my fader here, I'm on the left and I'm listening to the dry signal, which is, which is the actual live set. When I go top here, I've turned the crossfader to the right hand side and I'm now listening to the looper recording. Great. So I'm going to put it back to the left and start the live set. So let's just start the sequence here. Okay. So I'm going to record the first loop now and it's recording for four bars. And now click to the looper and you see that the looper is playing exactly what I heard. No difference in sound. Look, I can flash it to the left, to the right. Let's put the bass on. Don't any down any difference between the two. See, so that's the, the point. Now, look, I can reprogram my drums. You're not hearing these drums because at the moment you're hearing the looper. And it's exactly what I want. I want the crowd not to be able to hear whilst I program and choose the sounds I'm going to be using for my pattern here. And now I'm going to flick the fader in the middle to add this pattern to the loop we recorded now. And I've got now two sets of drums from the same drum sequencer, if you may. That's the one I just created. That's the looper. And I can merge the two if I stay in the middle, like so. Now let's, let's trigger new clips. You can't hear them because you're hearing the looper and I've muted the tracks. Let's unmute one or two tracks here and place the fader in the middle. And now I'm flicking to the new track. Like so. Let's record this one now. You're not hearing the looper. I record for four bars and I flip the looper now you're hearing the looper you're not hearing the live set anymore I can go to the next scene on my live set flick it in the middle and you can hear channel 4 and 5 with the looper I can now reset my drums go to the looper reset back to a 4-4 four four, for example And I'm going to send that into play. So you're hearing the looper. I slightly went over the, the middle bit so you can hear the live set slightly louder than the looper. The looper is in the background. And I can juggle. Like so. Let's not add the bass to it all. And let's record another loop. But this time I'm only going to record two bars. So I'm going to play after two bars. Oh, I, miss. oh, I messed that one up. Let's wait the next downbeat. I was a bit late doing this. Now, one and two. And now I play. And what happens is the looper plays half tempo. I'll do it again. And back to the real life set. That's another option we have with the looper. I can also reverse it. See the dynamic, you see the punch this gives to a live set that is improvised and played live. So that's how this master looper dry wet technique works. It enables you to record the loop that's being heard by the crowd, flick the fader, listen to the recording and not the real live set. Therefore, you can reset your controls, prepare for the next section of your live set whilst the crowd is hearing the looper and then by placing the fader halfway on the uh, uh, crossfader here, you can start 
adding the new sounds on top of the loop one at a time and then slowly go into the next section and then obviously you have access to all the manipulations we have in the looper reverse divide by two slow down accelerate all of this jazz which is very very fun uh, to play with and also extremely efficient on the dance floor so i hope you like this technique and you'll try it for yourselves see you soon on another tutorial for fast lane bye